So every time when you do Zoom or you do any video call, you scared about the kids will come around, you scared about the cats will come around. Bring it to some of the schools. <laughs> 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 Hello from Hong Kong. We are at Cyberport, the incubation platform in Hong Kong for grooming innovation technology startup. Today, we have three startups with us on a panel sharing with us the topic of innovation in a new normal. Uh, joining me on a panel today is uh, Mark from uh, Robon Technology, a robotics company. And then it's uh, Viola from uh, Fine Solutions AI, an education technology company and Gary, you know, from Bowtie, the first you know, virtual insurer in Hong Kong. So again, you know, without uh, further ado, maybe I'll let you introduce yourself first, yeah? Well, maybe I'll start with uh, Gary, the other way around, yeah? Sure, uh, thank you, thanks. Uh, really happy to be here. Um, so I'm Gary, I'm the head of growth at Bowtie. I'm also one of the fo early founding members of Bowtie. Bowtie is Hong Kong's first virtual insurance company. Um, we focus on selling health insurance uh, to the Hong Kong community for, for the time being. There are some interesting facts with that. Uh, is, uh, with virtual insurance, uh, we do not have any uh, uh, physical agents. Uh, and second of all, uh, we only sell health insurance products uh, that is um, pure protection based. Uh, so we don't have any investment um, components for our products. And third of all is that um, we're, we're local born and bred, uh, so most of our most of our members uh, are from Hong Kong. So, uh, hi everyone, I'm Viola. So I'm the CEO and founder of Fine Solution AI. So literally we're doing something more fun than insurance, a little bit. Don't get angry. So what we do is we're using AI, especially using the motivation model, which have the learning behavior analysis, and meanwhile can see people emotion and reaction. But we not only using for detection base, but we see people respond, but real time respond to it. So we roll out in Hong Kong for over a hundred schools in Hong Kong for pilot, and then we are going global, uh, especially going to Japan and other APAC areas as well. Insurance can be fun too. You know. yeah. Let, let's hear about you know uh, yeah. what Mark has to say. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say uh, you, you guys are not fun because I'm working on robots. We integrate robots not only for the robotics. We integrate uh, IoT, 5G, crowds, and AI into uh, solutions that. Uh, we kill the pain points during uh, every college's uh, uh, collapse or something. So um, uh, the COVID-19 could be uh, one of them because uh, you know that there are, there are lots of new normals happening every day and the situation is getting bad. And um, so just as a result, uh, as a tech developer, we would say tech developer, not only a robot developer. All three panelists are startups from our Braving the Epidemic campaign. The campaign is an initiative come up by our Cyberport community to provide solutions under the new normal to brave the epidemic. Well, honestly, to me, uh, this definitely COVID-19 pandemic has uh, a lot of challenging things, yeah. So what has that sort of impact your business, your you know, uh, fundraising, your day-to-day uh, uh, -day operation? In startup community, to be honest, especially if you have a pandemic like this, to be honest, fundraising is a lot more difficult because most of the investors, they want to be more conservative. They also want to know what's happening later on. Uh, but for our industry, education is a bit, um, I would say, have a mixed blessing. The reason why is if your company literally go out for digital transformation slightly earlier, then you get the advantages. So we are the one that we're working on online education, especially focusing on MOC and remote learning, that kind of thing. So to be honest, when the school, they say, we don't open school anymore. And it was like, da da, it's the time, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm sorry to say that, but the point is we help a lot of schools, especially when they're in difficulties. Yes. Major reason why is you need to understand a teacher, they need to grow so many students, but if it is only using a video conferencing tool, it's really difficult because the boring. human touch... And boring. 
And uh, yeah, that's really boring as well. <laughs> and, and you need to understand, there's a lot of teachers, they teach in that area for more than decades. You know what, I, I saw one of my son, the Zoom, so the teacher didn't do any screen sharing, just talk for 30 minutes. Okay. Wow, I was like, wow, so you it's just, it. <laughs> just, just like a robot, you know, this is yeah, the time yeah, when yeah, you yeah, come yeah, in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, in order to prevent from human touch, yeah. you, you say you, uh, it is hard for education to avoid human touch, but yeah. however, for me, I would like to you know prevent people from human touch, so that, that's why, um, but we're really talking about difficulties. Um, yes. <laughs> okay. so, uh, talking so about advantages, okay? This is advantages, <laughs> this, this is not yeah, the difficulties. Yeah. Yeah. The difficulties is we have our scope yep. of uh, development, the robust development plan in 2020 that we, were, we are focusing on uh, property management yeah. and education. Uh, uh, from March, that we have well prepared and our teams are, are all ready. And uh, all of a sudden, everything has changed after the COVID-19. And the, the thing is, we could not keep going on our old scope of yeah. our development. Yes. That is yeah. the problem. So, so that's why we uh, prepare uh, a series of items, uh, robots and solutions like uh, anti-epidemic uh, like anti-epidemic and like UV disinvention robots, right, something yeah. like that. I start my design of my uh, epidemic prevention robots, which we call the body temperature control robot, PEP 3000. And um, after 15 days, we have already got my uh, proof of concept, uh, the prototype, we're ready. And I, CyberPort helped us um, to uh, communicate with uh, EMSD. Uh, you let Fiscal and uh, mechanical service department and the government. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. government, the mm -hmm. government. So uh, the so uh, the commissioner is adopted well, with the help of fifty engineers. Right. right. So they adopted and try to deploy it into different uh, government department, like fire service department, corrective service department, like a transport department, and uh, EMSD themselves. This so is really, you know, for the uh, body temperature yeah. sensing to make yeah. sure that you know people do not have the symptom and and, and so yes, on. Yes, yeah. because uh, we are we are different from standalone robot, right, uh, right. standalone version. So the robot can uh, go around and make a surveillance. That's right. So what you're saying is that uh, with the uh, epidemic, you have this opportunity actually to uh, have a very specific use for uh, body temperature sensing, yeah. and then with that you uh, have uh, uh, basically got into the market of various different you know, uh, areas, including government organization and some of the uh, other you know, elderly homes and, and, and so on. Uh, so on and and so with forth. that, you can extend further usages. And, yes. and, and, and. So, so this really demonstrates the agility you know, yes. of a startup, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and I understand, you know, Bowtie, you're, you're, you're the first who launched the COVID-19 insurance package, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. You, you, you should talk about first that. Us, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, absolutely. So, I think like uh, COVID is like a really unfortunate event, like for yeah, you know true. for for the world, true. for Hong Kong, for everyone, um, and for a lot of small business as well. Um, but I guess um, with both ties, it's very interesting that uh, we geared towards focusing on health insurance, and we try to be healthcare really healthcare focused and centric, um, so that uh, when this happens, when you know COVID started happening, um, we start realizing that there's a lot of um, health aspects uh, that we should um, like chime in. So there there are a few aspects. One is the awareness part and the literacy. So we really want to help people to better understand, you know, what's going on, and if you have pro troubles or problems, like where should you go, etc. And uh, the other part is that, um, yeah, back to the point where uh, we were then immediately seeking out and think of, hey, um, for our health insurance product, how can we um, suit to different people in the community that is um, that is good? And third of all, we actually also partner with um, various uh, cyberport incubate mm -hmm. incubators yes, yeah. um, to really try to you know distribute um, the products to uh, to maybe more of the blue collar uh, working class like drivers, etc. So by creating you know certain products that fit them, so um, we really try to you know spread our wings uh, to really help people in need uh, during this difficult time. A lot of the consumer behaviors have changed. Yeah, like, yes, uh, true, definitely, I think in Hong Kong we're seeing a lot of changes happening. Is that um, not only are you know like the layman uh, general consumers, uh, they're more open to online activities these days. Yeah. Like there's more e-commerce coming up. That's right. uh, even yeah. buying online insurance. Like uh, definitely the numbers have spiked for us uh, over these past probably ten months. And at the same time, I think a lot of the you know very traditional businesses. Like even yesterday, I was looking at some seafood restaurant. Yes. Um, yeah. And they probably have a stall uh, like just in one of the old um, wet market area. He also has an Instagram store. 
and he, opens, really? uh, yeah, and he opens up for people to online order and even do deliveries through one of these delivery apps. And right. this whole thing has changed a lot, not just for um, this consumers. is really the new normal. Now. Yes, yeah, it's a new normal, yeah, and yeah, I think yeah, this yeah. will change. Uh, this is going to be uh, suddenly this accelerates Hong Kong's um, in terms of the adoption of new technology and online yeah, yeah, yeah. activities. Like I think it speeds up probably three to five years, like easily. Yeah. So I think um, this also changes a lot. Um, That's right. That's very true. I think some of the things that we thought uh, uh, in the in in in, in the pre sort of COVID-19 situation uh, are nice to have. Now is basically a necessity. Yeah. So you can't do away without that. I, I, I believe, you know, like for example, you know, uh, uh, learning from home yeah, uh, for yeah, the schools, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, school. in, in the past, you know, online, you know, uh, learning may be a nice to have thing, but then now is a must. Yeah. It's a must. So everybody has to, not even for kids, even for adults. So let's say if you go for compliance training, all that stuff in the past said you have to have physical meetings and things, right? That's right. So now they all change it to online. So literally we're also working on a project that is also for compliance training, but we're going to see people's response and behavior when they're learning. No privacy issue because we don't record any videos. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Well, oh, that's an interesting thing. You know, now with uh, online meetings so sort of uh, uh, well accepted, yeah, 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 people yeah. often just you know log into the meeting and then they uh, stop the video and they do something else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so with with your solution, probably you can provide the analytics of uh, such you know behavior yeah, 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 and alert yeah, yeah. people that okay. And, but but in my point of view, I think in another way around. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. So yeah. you join a meeting or you join a learning. The most major reason is you want to learn something from it, right? Right. But the point is you cannot control whatever the teacher is saying, some good stuff or some important or unimportant stuff, right? Yes. So I was like, if there is something that you can fast forward. Oh, All the way, right. you only yeah. find a high line, you find the keywords, you find a point, <laughs> and then you can cut down the learning time from three hours all the way into one hour. Thank God, I want something like that. I so, wish I had that too. <laughs> so literally, we're working something like that at the moment, which also it means that have higher learning efficiency and don't demotivate a person when That's the person right. wants to learn. True, true, true. So, yeah. so that is the reason why I want to work in that way. And meanwhile, for the host, so let's say if you teach something to people, you also want to know how they feel. So Peter, your idea is, is really good. I'll, <laughs> we'll definitely will take into it because you want to know how they feel. That is the most important thing. Yeah. What do you think, you know, Mark? You know, with your robotics, you know, uh, uh, technology, yeah. Can you also do something fancy? Yeah, I'm just doing something fancy. Yes, uh, I sent you my latest video regarding my uh, latest 5G couch robot. Oh, yeah, 5G yeah, couch really, yeah, robot. Yeah, yeah. So because there are two new normal, we call that after COVID-19 new normal. But there is also an evolution, 5G evolution. That's right. Happening April 2020. So. Uh, with, uh, with 5G, we have low latency and uh, very uh, you know, large bandwidth. You can do everything. You can have uh, excellent live streaming. You have excellent conferencing. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah. excellent uh, imaging, wherever you like. You have uh, whatever different data. Whatever falls on your face, you can see it, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We have, we'll, there will be you know, something like 5G diagnosis, 5G you know, uh, medical consultancy services, something will pop up. I believe that after the new normal, because uh, People release and their mind has will be changed. Yeah. So uh, before that, maybe they uh, will, there will be some hesitation in the online education or yeah, online yeah, yeah. online always, course. Yeah, always, always, of course. But uh, you know, I, I'm going to share something that my son is going to have a Zoom football lesson. <laughs> well, wow. so and my <laughs> wife is going to participate. That's so hard. I uh, so I think that's people already changed their mind. Yeah. So that's my So how, how, how are they going to do that, you know, virtually? I uh, do pay some, you know, scopes and then try to, you know, pretend to, to, to have some I tackling, so. something okay, like okay, that. Lately, the learning not, is the parents yeah. is learning, yes. not, not the kids is yes. learning. Uh, Gary, you mentioned just now about, you know, the uh, e-commerce uh, 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 adoption and the penetration. So I, I recall a McKinsey report uh, saying that in the first three months in the U.S., this is uh, in the U.S., in the first three months, the uh, U.S. Uh, e-commerce penetration actually, you know, exceeded the past 10 years of uh, uh, e-commerce uh, penetration. So this is really something uh, that is very impactful. Right. Uh, something that 
uh, for our innovation technology communities, uh, positive that came out from uh, COVID-19. Yeah. And for uh, virtual insurance, uh, is there any other you know, new things that you believe because of this that would generate even you know, much more opportunities? Yeah, um, that is uh, very interesting. Um, I think traditionally, like uh, insurance is a very interesting aspect where if you've purchased it, you actually don't want to use it kind of because like if you use it, it means that you're probably in sick or something. Yeah. But actually in another sense that you're probably getting something back from the, um, from the premium that you have paid to an insurer. So that's very interesting. So um, this one is more like a, more like a cure based um, kind of protection. But when we were thinking of before, instead of curing people and then getting paid out, yeah. how about preventive? Mm -hmm. Because now that we're thinking more preventive of, let's say, um, is it possible that, uh, that uh, as an insurance company that we encourage a person to stay healthy? So when the person stay healthy, it's actually good for that person. Actually, the person actually pays less costs and actually good for insurance company too. So overall, it's, it's a, it's, it's a win-win-win scenario. So um, being preventive instead of after the fact of having care, that one is a huge mind shift. And I think um, across the whole world, this is a trend and it will eventually uh, come to Hong Kong as well. So in my point of view, in a coming new trend after COVID, I yes. would say the new, new normal, I would say in three different directions. For education-wise, it has to be stronger personal touch, but in terms of online. So it means the human interaction enabled, but you were doing online. That is a really crucial thing, because in the past, most of the online education is really maximum can do one-on-one, -on -one, or exam practice on paper or on online education is just multiple choice, that kind of thing. So the interaction is not there. So I guess the AI powered solution, for example, the behavior, learning behavior and engagement, motivation that should be added in. That's the first thing. Second thing is the way of learning. Because in the past, there is always one way and So it's like the teacher quotes you, so you go for the exam. In Asia, mostly like this. In US, 90% is like that as well, because the exam, it it affects everything, right? But now I think it's time for everybody to really ring a bell to think of how you're gonna learn and how you're gonna teach mm -hmm. in a hybrid way. Because physical learning, I guess in coming one or two years is still be heavily affected. But these two year gap, so think, so what would they do at, at, at home? Even though if you have learn, online learning and whatever it is. So the hybrid learning, that kind of mode, they still need to keep it in, which means can help the ones that who is really in need. So a lot of egg tech that it can be put in place. The last, things, the last thing is, I do believe personalized learning is really important for everyone. And uh, schools and everybody should really put into a lot of effort in order to make it work as oh, well. That's great, yeah. So, so Viola has uh, sort of in her area of expertise, you know, the education technology made some uh, predictions, yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Fortune basically, you know, more, more uh, uh, human touch, you know, with, with the technology. Yeah, and, and, and you, Mark, yeah, what do you think about, you know, any predictions, you know, in, in your area? Predictions yeah. and um, people avoid touching. So that's my protection, <laughs> because uh, that's true. yeah, that's true. People that's avoid true. touching, so uh, we have uh, co uh, developed uh, a new device called Lone Touch with HKPC. So for the avalator that yeah. lift, yes. they uh, do not need to touch panel. Right. So right. simply use the uh, RL sensor to you know uh, indicate the location and with the relay um, installed inside the lift. So uh, this is uh, something like this new normal. And also when you go to fast food shop, mm -hmm. you simply touch the panel, the, right. the smart key or not, you don't like it. You like to be, uh, you, you like to talk to, to, to the shop manager to say, uh, I would like to have the burger, something like that. You don't want to touch it, isn't it? So that's the problem that people don't like to touch anything. There are lots of, you know, uh, technology you could be uh, digital, digital transformation from from the, 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 the old way to the new way. So avoid touching could be a, a, a giant market that I, I can foresee. Right, right. Well, it's very interesting. You know, if there is one thing that uh, you can say to sum up the, the impact, you know, uh, on you or and your business uh, with the uh, COVID-19 situation, which probably is going to, you know, create this new normal and going to stay for a while. Uh, what was that one thing then? Yeah. So for me, it's like a new drive. Mm -hmm. Because uh, every time you believe you always have a plan to do something, but something happens, it's like, oh, we need to think of something new. So it's a new drive in order to say, go for it, hey, that, that kind of thing. So 
literally it changed every idea that I have right, and yeah. also speed up a lot of things because education normally is a bit slower than other industry because it takes several semester things in order to happen, yes, right? Yes, but yes. now it's like, after they talk to you, make a call, hey, I want to adopt the solution yeah. tomorrow, something like that. So uh, one more thing I would say is the digital transformation for every industry they need to take into counter for no matter it's just your own operation or other operation. If you adopt it, as long as when there's anything it comes to it will still have a chance in order to grow and shine. Right. This is a wake-up call for you know uh, accelerating digital transformation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's really true. Yeah. So, uh, do you think after the COVID-19, um, you will still use uh, your 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 conferencing software for education? Yeah, quite very likely because uh, the most important new normal is they change your habit on yes. doing things. Mm -hmm. So now, to be honest, if you have a meeting, I would prefer Zoom or I would prefer video conferencing because I don't need to travel. I don't need to go out. Literally, that's the first thing. Second thing is, um, I, I will try to uh, cut down a lot of unnecessary meetings because, you know what, you need to do video conferencing for hours is really difficult. So, mm -hmm. so it's more efficient, um, which means that you're also stuck at home longer time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And the virtual presence is will be that, like a lot of, as you mentioned, like Zoom um, conferences or even like events, offline events, turn, go and gone online uh, these days. But I think uh, not only that, adding to all these is that um, a lot more uh, companies or startups will start thinking, how do I add a more personal touch and human touch over the screen? How is that personal touch being added on? Right, right. People hate yeah. touching. So I think new <laughs> the virtual touch is... Virtual uh, touch. Yeah. Oh, okay. exactly. Good <laughs> idea. Good, good, good. Yeah. So we're going to have more virtual touch. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I don't know if you guys need to travel a lot. But honestly, before the COVID-19, I, I need to travel a lot mm -hmm. to China because uh, most of our supplies in China, mm -hmm. and I got a team in the Greater Bay Area. Mm -hmm. So uh, working on R&D, something like mechanical parts. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have suppliers like uh, motors, like uh, different relays and, and, and components, mm -hmm. maybe. Grounded. So you in grounded. The <laughs> you cannot do it anywhere. So uh, we are forced to um, to work on some new, you know, uh, solutions during our uh, uh, meetings or suppliers interview. I, I mean, suppliers interview. So, when you are not able to go to your supplier's factory, what can you do? Is this really need to know if that perks or if those um, suppliers is sufficient to provide your services? Right. This is really, really hard. Yeah. So maybe this is also a very big market that will we'll be facing. But uh, we we're trying uh, to go through it by using different uh, online conferencing software. On, on the first point you make, I, I, I'm just, you know, while you're saying, you know, imagining a possi possible solution of, you know, having a robot on the ground, you know, the, doing everything, and then you wear a virtual, you know, uh, reality glass, yeah. or, or augmented reality, you yeah. know, uh, glass that you can actually see what the uh, robot sees and then, you know, uh, control it and, and, and so on to, to basically, let the robot be there physically to do the yes. work for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. that kind of uh, application yes. will probably become you know quite widespread and so yeah, on. Yeah, so that's why I built a five G coach robot. Yeah, right. You 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 are all you know uh, startups you know uh, groomed uh, in Hong Kong. Yeah, uh, I'm sure you know there's a reason for why you want to stay in Hong Kong to really you know start your business. And can you share you know some of those with us? You know why. Yeah, Hong Kong, you know, what's unique about Hong Kong that really, you know, help you to, to, to fly, to take off? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think I can share a lot because um, I, I spent my times in Canada and the U.S. Uh, for a lot of places for, for many years. Um, and, I mean, being raised in Hong Kong, I always know that Hong Kong has a very good, solid uh, legal system, regulatory system. And, uh, but I mean, these are all, you know, great softwares or like supplementary. But I think the most important is really the Hong Kong people. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, we always have a saying that, you know, um, uh, we've worked a lot of we were, we've worked with a lot of smart people in different areas. But when we come back to Hong Kong, we know that the people here are um, not only on the on, on the work ethic, but at the same time, the intelligence and also the the business acumen is very strong here. Yeah, I want to echo that because I believe that inside a small city like Hong Kong, there are lots of great university. So we have a sufficient or maybe very sufficient numbers of uh, HR pool. So um, so to support every industry, like engineering, like uh, computer science, like finance, like marketing, whatever.
but uh, the only problem with Hong Kong is uh, the market is not big. Mm -hmm. However, we have uh, the Greater Bay Area right now, so uh, the market is getting huge. So I believe that this is the Great Bay Area could compensate the, the, the insufficiency of uh, the, the, the market, market size, size yeah. of Hong mm -hmm. Kong. Right, right. So for me, I would say um, Hong Kong is a bit very special city in the world. First of all, there is three reason why I still stay here. I'm married to a Dutch. I personally burn over 0.5 million US dollars in my own company <laughs> for, for R&D. So you tell me. Huh? So for Hong Kong people, the most important thing is really the city is really dynamic, it's fast. So to be honest, I have lived in you for a long time, but the point is if you want to ask somebody if to work for you for something, they're good, uh, but Hong Kong is super fast. So it's super dynamic, so you can adopt something new in Hong Kong very quick. Second thing is um, the city is really well developed, especially in law, in, let's say if you want to have a startup, so there's a lot of community like Cyberport and a lot of support from different government uh, authorities and things. So it means that you can start something up very quick. And the third thing is the network. So in Hong Kong, because it's so late, um, so linked to so many areas, so like APAC, China, EU, or even in US. So whenever, if you have something new, you put it in Hong Kong as a proof of concept, and Hong Kong is also a very difficult place to, to, <laughs> to yeah. get it well. Yeah. So if you can really prove it in Hong Kong that you nailed it, it means that you also, you, you're gonna succeed in other areas as well. So that is the reason why we start in Hong Kong. Uh, it's not easy, but uh, time is right now. <laughs> yeah. Now as a sort of a final concluding question, you know, really, you know, a million dollar question here is that, you know, now you have uh, uh, shared with us, you know, how you have adapted, you know, how, how you have really, you know, uh, 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 understand the uh, advantages or take advantages of the Hong Kong situation and, and, and thrive. What do you think, you know, under this new normal is the, 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 your outlook of, uh, say, the future? Yeah, how would, you know, that be, yeah. Right, I mean, that is a, like a crystal ball question. That is, uh, like, there are so many interpretations uh, for this, but if there's only one takeaway, uh, I would really think, um, think that uh, a lot more traditional business will go online. I think that is my final conclusion on this. And uh, that, would, that would actually imply a lot of things. That would imply more consumers uh, will be able to accept um, you know, a, a new form of um, business transactions. Uh, that would mean that more businesses uh, will get a new uh, way of revenue, uh, re revenue mix and also product mixed. And also the human communication will change uh, over time. Um, and I think this will just be bright and there's just a lot of opportunities uh, going forward. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, I will say something similar, but a little bit twist. Uh, I would say digital transformation, no matter for individual or companies or whoever it is. So the virtual presence of that thing. So literally, if your life will be completely changed after this pandemic situation, your habit and consuming habit, learning habit, even though wherever you work as well. So the faster you go for uh, digital transformation, the more benefit that you gain from it. Right, good. So it depends on if you treat it as a pain point of the ecology, or that's uh, definitely a, an evolution of the ecology. So um, what, what I'm saying, what we are discussing uh, during the past hour, we're talking about uh, how to avoid human touch and with uh, still, you know, keep the standard of uh, the living uh, similar. So it is hard. So during evolution, we could have billions of ideas. So uh, as a Hong Kongner, I believe that we should keep ourselves creative. So um, maybe we could have ding and could have a new idea tomorrow. Right, right. Okay, so stay creative, and this is to you something that is very key, you know, in the coming, you know, your outlook of the future. Yes. Hong Kong will continue to be very creative and with uh, great see, ideas see, coming up. thousands of solutions yeah. coming out. Right, during, good, good, during, good. During this yeah, let's, let's keep that in mind and be, continue to be creative and, and generate, you know, great ideas. Yeah, it was really a great discussion that we have just now. You know, thank you so much, you know, for joining the panel and sharing your experience, how you have adapted, how you have, you know, braved the uh, epidemic and all those. Yeah, really, you know, especially, you know, the last part about the outlook. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well done.